Hello folks, my name is Mark Wilson and I'm the founder of AccuModel, where we inspire confidence in hydraulic modeling. This tutorial is the last one in the series that goes along with EPA Net User's Manual Chapter 2. This is Section 9, Running a Water Quality Analysis. We'll continue the series with some more advanced topics from the user's manual, but this kind of ends the quick start tutorial portion, chapter two. Anyway, the first thing that we're going to look at for water quality is the simplest one, which is water age. So to do that, we have to change some settings. Here in our browser, we're going to look at the data tab and click on our quality, double click on our quality settings. There are a few parameters we can look at that are out of the box here. The one we want is age, and we can just go ahead and run that. Run was successful, and then we can look at the output in our map. I'm going to change our node map setting to age, and it gives us a default legend over here and we can go ahead and play forward through the time steps to see how the water age changes in the network. Okay, one other thing that I'm gonna push the stop button. One other thing that we might wanna look at is the age in the tank. So I'm gonna click on the tank, look our graphs, and we want to look at age, perfect. Okay, you'll notice I'm still only running 24 hour simulation here. So the age starts out at zero since we didn't specify an initial age and it climbs, 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 climbs and then it starts to drop. We didn't run the simulation long enough to see the periodic behavior that you'll see in a tank over time. So let's just go ahead back into our data options times and let's run this for 10 days 240 hours go ahead and run that again and for some reason I've got some negative pressure warnings that I could look into if I wanted to we're still just more interested in water age of the tank age now See, after about 60 hours, we get to develop a periodic behavior in the tank, and that's to be expected. The next thing we'll look at is the transport and decay of chlorine in the network. So, what we want to do is go back into our data, options, quality, double click, and we'll just type in chlorine. Okay, and then one more thing we need to do is go into the reactions, and as the manual states, we want a global bulk coefficient of minus 1.0. So bulk is what happens in the center of the pipe, not near the wall, and we could also specify a wall coefficient, what happens when that water reacts with, say, biofilm on the perimeter of the pipe. We won't do that for this. Okay, we're going to go ahead and run that again. We're also going to set an initial quality, the reservoir, and oh, I already have that in there. We're going to set that to an initial concentration of 1.0. That would be 1.0 milligrams per liter as it's leaving the reservoir, and that's going to be a constant flow out of there. So now we can go ahead and run. Okay, go back into our map and we'll look at chlorine both in our nodes and in our pipes. So we get two legends up here and we can go ahead and run that through. You can see if we, if we stop and go back to time zero, the blue is a lower concentration. That's, we didn't put any initial concentrations anywhere out in the network we could and it would look better from the beginning but without putting any in it's as if 
our system is starting up from scratch with only chlorine at the reservoir. So you want to run this for a long period of time and then look at your results when the system equalizes. So we can step through here. We can go ahead and play through the different time steps. We can also look at a given junction in a graph, chlorine. We can kind of see it takes, you know, maybe 30 hours for a periodic behavior to start. Okay, one last thing to show you is a reaction report. So if we go over here to our reports, reaction, we can see that since we only specified a rate of decay for the bulk flow, that's where the most of our decay is coming from. Only 13% is coming from our tanks. Well, that's all for today. Good luck in your modeling. If this presentation was helpful, go ahead and like the video. I encourage you to subscribe to the channel for future updates on more tutorials. We'll do some advanced tutorials at some point. Also check us out at our website, accu-model.com. We'd love to help you out with your modeling efforts if you need a little help.